Sure. Um, I'd like to ask Central to maybe make their way up to the table since I know they'll be presenting first or wherever they're going to stand. Uh, this is the second in our um, series of having you uh, get presentations from our schools. Um, and this they will be speaking directly to their school improvement leadership teams and their school improvement plans. And before they even get going, I, I thought each time I bring them up, I'll give you a little tidbit so you get a little information of some of the process. Uh, you may not realize it, but for the past three years now, every school improvement leadership team has to uh, meet with me once a month <laughs> to work on to get them started as we did on the school improvement plan. Then they have their own committee meetings as chairs with teacher leaders. Um, and then the teachers, you'll hear from some of them tonight, I'm sure from both schools, they meet with other teachers in order to carry out their school improvement plans. And there's also an admin uh, meeting that I have with the schools where I meet with just the administrators to help prepare for that plan in that. So a lot of work goes into this and I'm very excited to see Central start us off with the uh, work that they've been doing. How are you? Good? I'd like to start out thanking you for having us. We appreciate it. Um, several years ago, we, we did school spotlights, and it's nice to be back. Um, and I want to thank all of you for, all, for having us and listening. I'll try to keep it concise and high level, too, just like Joe Lightcap did. <laughs> it's probably part of the Joe thing. <laughs> Does this work? All right, good. So we actually have four instructional leadership, we have four school improvement leadership teams at Central High School. We have the Instructional Excellence Team um, where we talk about high expectations, differentiated instruction, systems of detracking, AVID, um, things at the classroom level and things we can do to support students at the classroom level. We have the culture and climate team. Our culture and climate team focuses on a little bit on the building, honestly, right? The place of the school as well as the sense of belonging for students. Um, the equity team, it's in the title. It's something that's been a focus for a long time in the district and we continue to focus on it. Um, this year, they're working a lot with student voice and student difference making groups, as well as continuing to think through what, what are the next steps professional development wise and action wise for our, for our staff. And we have the family engagement and community, or family and community engagement team, which is really um, a big deal for a big school. Right? And so we are consistently trying to think through and hear from our families, getting better, um, and, and our plans are, are really strong in that regard as well, um, to engage them as well as to increase clear communication. So a little bit high level, again, data and accountability. I just want to highlight some things. Um, under, with regard to SAT, which is now the, if you don't know, it's the, it's the, it used to be the ACT, it's now the SAT that we go through, go, uh, is our state test. Since 2017, Central's SAT scores actually have been higher than the state overall and uh, in the district. Um, and, and we actually, this year when we looked at the data, we, are, we have higher scores than eight of the nine other similar area high schools that we compare ourselves to. Similar being by, being by size, by demographic. Um, and that's really, that's, that's big. Um, advanced placement, um, this is actually exciting too. We had a little dip with COVID, but we are definitely back to having more students take AP courses, more students um, from different dem demographics taking AP courses, more students taking the AP exams, and the key, more students scoring three or, or higher on the AP exams as well. So that's a real plus. And then uh, under discipline, 98% uh, of our students, we just ran the data around break time, 98% of our students comply with all of our school norms and procedures when you look at discipline referrals and, and that sort of thing. So that's for a very large high school, that's excellent for us. Um, accountability responses, we are focusing on freshmen and graduation rate because they play into each other. All the research shows that the more focus you have on freshmen, the, the, the more you, you try to get them to be on track, um, the greater chance that the students will actually graduate from high school. So we have uh, tier two as a focus on freshman teams. We actually just looked at some great data. Ryan is in charge of all of our freshman teams. This is Ryan Krause. He's one of our assistant principals. He meets with the freshman teams regularly. We look at grade rate distribution. We have panorama discussions on all of our teams. Um, we talk about four-year planning. Equal Opportunity Schools is reviving. It was there before. Kind of just looked at the data over COVID. We're reviving all of the things that go along with that. And then AVID Strategies School-wide is a big focus for us this year. That's um, a long time coming, but really, really glad to have it. 
With me tonight, before I get into our next thing, I just want to make sure because I forgot, we have my administrative team, Ryan. We have Ryan. We have Monty, Montia Gardner. She's one of our assistant principals. We have Brian Yako, assistant principal. Jane Stillman, assistant principal. And then best of all, we have a couple of teachers here representing for our leadership teams. We have Jenny Slager. She's our, um, with our special ed, but she also is our family and community engagement, one of our co-chairs for that. And Aubrey Wachtel, who is our equity co-chair. So we don't have, uh, for the next one, we have instructional excellence team. So Sarah Long, who's not here tonight, she's our associate principal and I, we both lead this team. Uh, we don't have a teacher yet. We keep looking for a teacher who wants to step up and take on that shared responsibility. But these are th our three key areas of focus for that team. AVID, as I already said, AVID school-wide and working on those AVID strategies. Uh, we just found out when we were working with Centennial in January, as we were thinking through our advisories, that actually AVID this year has created an AVID advisory curriculum. So we're excited about bringing those into our advisories next year for our freshmen and sophomores. Um, utilizing course of light collaboration time effectively. High schools had a change before it was weekly, Wednesday, or, or late starts, and now we have the early outs, so we're working on trying to uh, get those course of light collaborations to be really effective with different timelines. And then uh, identifying and using means of differentiation. This came out when we've surveyed our staff and talked with our staff as a big deal, especially as we've detracked courses. Um, that differentiation is really key. Moving on to culture and climate, Corinne Pennock could not be here this evening uh, for a medical uh, procedure. So we, uh, I'm just gonna talk through her three areas of focus for her team. Improve the sense of belonging. Again, that's that internal sense of belonging that students have in our school. That's a focus for them. Increasing a sense of security. And then moving students' sense of central from just a space to actually being a place. Right, so those are their three key areas on their committee. Next, I'm gonna hand it over to Aubrey. Aubrey's gonna talk about her committee, equity. Thanks, Joe. Um, as you can see on the slide, we are working on analyzing the diversity and equity of student difference making groups. That does mean basically surveying the students that are part of things like student council, yearbook, um, but also the rest of our um, student organizations around the school um, to try and find out what kids are participating in, and participating in those things that set up our, um, you know, the milieu of our student body. Um, so we're analyzing that and then hopefully looking at, okay, where are we missing some representation in those groups and trying to find ways to encourage those students groups that are underrepresented in those um, clubs to get involved and have a voice. Um, we're also looking at, you know, what other organizations can we help to encourage to set up, like the Social Justice Committee, or um, no, Social Justice Choir, uh, and, um, you know, getting those uh, kids engaged a little bit more. Um, and then long term, we're looking at what kind of professional development can we provide to staff um, that actually really sets them up with instructional tools, things that they can change about what they're doing in their classroom um, in order to, um, you know, provide a, a more equitable learning experience and help to close those achievement gaps. Um, I am joined by Mr. Krause and Dr. Gardner on this committee, um, and we do have representation from multiple departments. Um, and we're not just looking at, um, you know, our like um, young black males, but also our students with disabilities, our LGBTQ community, as well as our um, uh, multi-language learners as well. So we're trying to diversify um, what we look at in terms of equity. Do you want me to say your name? Sure. <laughs> and now we have Jenny Slager. She is representing the Family and Community Engagement Team. Um, we are excited um, because, like Joe had mentioned, we are really excited to welcome freshmen and really be focused on freshmen um, in a lot of ways. So one of the things that we are doing is reformatting Open House as well as our future freshman night. So um, we talked about future freshman night during communications that um, we just had it last Thursday and we had about 350 people there, um, which is just an excellent out um, outcome, especially post-COVID when we had to do it via Zoom. And so it was exciting to have people in the building and to hear some feedback from families and have them um, tell us that 
it just took a little bit of that weight of anxiety of um, that, this big transition to high school. And to be able to do that in January instead of in August um, feels really good. And so we're excited about that. And that subcommittee is now going to put their focus on open house and how we can make open house um, not just about um, sort of just the nuts and bolts of Central, but also um, really welcome all students into the school climate and culture. So we're looking at reformatting those, and um, we were excited about our um, outcome for future freshman night. We have also been looking at our family conferences in both March and then upcoming in the, in the fall in October. We piloted some team conferences for our freshmen, um, and we're excited to expand that to even more freshmen um, to in continue to allow families um, to hear the positives as well as the areas that we want our students to be supported in. Um, and we are also looking at expanding to having a follow-up date for family conferences um, for those families that were unable to attend at those times um, outside of the school area as well, just to allow families to really have multiple opportunities. Um, and so that comes through um, the work of teachers um, becoming home visit trained and um, having that opportunity to meet with families in a space that they feel comfortable. Um, and lastly, one of our last area of focus is a consistent means of communication with students and family. And one of the biggest um, areas that we were really looking at was the website. And we were so excited to see um, the new website. And we're just excited to continue to work um, with the communications department on how we can make it even more accessible to families and make it um, meaningful so that it's not just a place that is static, but that has ongoing communication, calendars, as celebrations, and a place that um, when people want to know what's happening at Central, um, they, can, they know they can go right there. Um, and that, um, a big area of working on that, we have two subcommittees, one group working on the academic communication, and then when working with um, the athletic department with Jane, um, we've been working on also how to help families have consistent communication with athletics and extracurriculars so that we can continue to make it so that families know what opportunities their students have so then they can reach out and then their students feel a part of the school. So we're very excited. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Laura gave me the eye. Do you have well, any questions? Last time they ran out so fast. So yeah, stay here if they have some <laughs> questions, please. <laughs> if you guys have questions, please. You know they were coming possibly. Oh. <laughs> I want to know what his question is. <laughs> Elizabeth? Oh, there's a question. Audience? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, Elizabeth? Um, yeah, so thank you. I had a few questions. Uh, one question was specific to the um, the equity committee or subcommittee. Um, as you're talking with students, so you had mentioned um, that you're going to students from underrepresented backgrounds and yearbook, and uh, you gave some other examples. Um, I was curious about the reasons that you're hearing from these students of why they, like, why they needed to be approached in the first place? Like, why aren't they already engaged? What are you hearing from students? So I am not able to answer that question yet. We're still in the process of collecting data from those groups to find out what those organizations look like in terms of demographics. So um, our next step would be to, to find out why and to look at ways that we could approach um, promoting those organizations and making them look more uh, accessible to a variety of different groups. Um, I, as as uh, you know, somebody that's just been paying attention to this and is passionate about it, I'm sure that we do have an issue with um, language gaps, right? That interfere with students' understanding of what's available to them. Um, so a big part of what we'll be looking at is how can we get that information out to our multi-language learners um, and also to look at ways that we might get this information out to students besides just like the student announcements or even presentations that we do, you know, especially um, like freshman day and our first full day of school. We promote these student organizations to all students, um, but looking at like ways that we might make that 
more appealing to them or make them feel like we really want them, not just that it's available to them, but we want them to be involved. Um, but so far, we haven't gotten to the step where we're able to really like ask kids, like, why is it that you're not participating in these yet? Um, because certainly there are other factors to consider. These are after school programs oftentimes. And so accessibility for transportation, a lot of our um, young students that aren't participating aren't doing so because they have other jobs that they're doing after school or they're watching their siblings and things like that. So we can also take a look at like, well, when are these clubs meeting, right? When are these organizations meeting so that they might be available to students um, that might have trouble doing it outside of school. Um, so we've got a lot to do. We're just starting with collecting the demographic information because we feel it's pretty strong to have the data to then back up the next steps that we're not just asking like, um, you know, the students to pay attention, but the teachers to pay attention as well um, to get that buy-in. So did that answer your question? Um, yes. Okay. And I mean, I'll pause here if anybody else wanted to ask a question. If parents wanted to support you in your efforts, is there someone to contact or are there a place for parents to support the efforts that are happening right now? That's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it's something that actually when we first started the SILT team a few years ago, we definitely talked about how can we engage parents in the process. Um, I don't want to speak for Jenny, <laughs> but I can say that you know that would be an ideal place for sure. And uh, and, and then I think I honestly think like when we're probably next year would be the year that I think all of the committees will be ready to, to invite other people to come to the table. Um, to be quite honest with you, Central had some fits and starts when this process started. So, you know, yeah. What's that? Thank you. I really appreciate you you recognizing that and saying that. But let me tell you, they are on a roll now. Yeah, right. we're <laughs> Absolutely. On a roll now. So, uh, so I, I would say like this is our... We're, we're counting this as year one of real, like, detailed getting down to, to the bare bones and not doing things just for paper, um, which is what it felt like, you know, when we weren't in person, right? So, uh, so I think next year, you know, each committee can talk about how can we can involve other people. I can add something that just so you know, there's a rubric that they do at the um, end of every school year. Um, and if you get on um, the excellent part, the four, it is that you've started inviting families to some of your committees. And some of the schools have mm -hmm. some parents already on some of their subcommittees. So you'll see that. But we'll do that at the end of the year, and I'm sure it'll lead us into next year. But they are doing a remarkable job. This is really uh, the year that it has turned the corner, and I think it's wonderful. Did Elizabeth have another question? Always and forever. Um, <laughs> this could this question could be for you. It could be for multiple people. Whoever'd like to answer it. I'm curious about what has been a striking lesson that you have learned in making these changes. So maybe something surprising you learned, or something something humbling, or something something that's really resonated with you. Okay, um, you know I can talk, but I'm going to see if someone else wants to first. You want to talk? I sure. Okay. Um, I, I tried to keep my time at the mic short, but here we are. Um, I think uh, in working with our group, um, one of the things that has been very striking to me um, is just how passionate we are about this. Um, we care a lot um, and so much that we have added like an extra meeting to our time. Our teachers have agreed to come together and say, we want to work on this more. Um, just even the survey that we're sending out to students, we put so much care and time and attention into the language and making sure that we were um, being aware of how we can make it feel as inclusive as it possible that all students have the opportunity to be represented in this demographic survey in whatever way they feel like they um, want to identify or, um, you know, w where their kind of ownership over their personal identity may be, either in ethnicity, religious background, language, um, orientation, um, you name it. We tried to find a way to make sure that we're like catching all of those kids um, and seeing where they where their interests fall and where their engagement falls, and then also where we're missing students. And um, 
the time that we put into that and the conversations that our committee members had with students to prepare for that, um, it, it's just one little survey that I just sent out to teachers, but it, we put so much care into it. And I think that that to me was very eye-opening just as a committee chair. I'll keep mine short. From our, from our committee, um, I think we're really excited about the, what ABBA can do more at the high school. Um, for so many years it's been there and it's just been a class. Um, it's been in one room, its identity has all been in one room. Um, and to see it starting to grow, to see us starting to talk about other things, that we're, how it can spread, to, to hear the curiosity of teachers as we do talk about it in our committee, um, I think that's, that's pretty, pretty exciting for us. Jenny? Um, I think for the Family and Community Engagement Committee, uh, one big area that we have been excited about um, is just seeing how much we want people to know uh, all the opportunities that they have at Central. Um, and so it was exciting the way we restructured this year to have every teacher be a part of a SILT team. Um, that was a big part because we got a lot more voices and by building it into the workday, it allowed people to um, be invested in it in a, in a more meaningful way. Um, and so to be able to look at um, how can we make sure that families feel they have a consistent way of getting information, but also that um, students can come and see um, what's available to them. So. Um, I think just the restructuring of the format to allow every teacher to have an opportunity to have a voice in the process has been really important. Any questions? Were they overwhelmed on um, future freshman night in such a big campus and all new? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I think it was a big, we had, we had some students that that stayed with the parents and walked around. Um, I was really happy to see the students that were like, you know, you, you go do whatever you want to do as an adult. You know, we're just going to walk around with our friends and that sort of thing. So I liked the format. Um, we did do a survey. Not only four people responded to our survey um, to try to get some feedback, but it was more of an open house. And it was really kind of fun to see the kids who, who were just venturing out. Um, it was fine, you know, when, when kids are with their parents too. So I wouldn't say, I mean, definitely you've been to Central. Right? It is, it is awe-inspiring to see our commons, to see our Decker Theater, to see lots of different things like that. And it's much bigger than any other school where they've come from. But um, it was fun. And they looked like they were enjoying it. Yeah. I totally forgot, I totally forgot to fill out the survey. You might send a reminder. <laughs> <laughs> we, we could, yeah. yeah. I actually... Um, Sorry. I think I put it on the website today. If I, it was on my list to do today. I think I actually added it to the live feed of the website, Ms. Moore. Oh. <laughs> so. yeah. awesome. And right. lastly, how can we support you? Um, you know, you, I, you guys are, this board is, has always been supportive. It's, you know, we've been through a project with you, a, not a small project, right? <laughs> it was nice to come here and not talk about that. Um, <laughs> So I, you know, I, I, we get nothing but, but support from you. So I, I think just continue doing what you do, right? Come and visit, come see us, come talk with us as parents or as board members um, and, and, and just be open to us and we're, we're gonna be, continue to be open to you. Great, thank you yep. all so much. Thank this you. This is awesome, great job. Thank you. Thanks.